uh, I think it's inevitable. I think uh, the field has been coming into its own over the last 10 years. Um, and increasingly we're getting people from all sorts of cellular biology programs or projects wanting to know or realizing that uh, these sugars are involved in function and they don't know how to do it. So increasingly glycoproteomics is, is being wanted, being uh, worked on, being improved so that we can answer these questions. I, I mean, to me, these molecules are really important. They, uh, uh, they're attached to 50% of the genome uh, and they come in very many shapes and sizes on different sites. So you can't just ignore that these molecules have got some function. And I think if you're in answer to your question, the last 10 years has seen an explosion in the biologies trying to work out what their function is. And I think that only has to improve and increase over the next 10 years. Well, if you think that there are 20,000 genes and probably billions of proteins, Millions of these proteoforms are because the glycosylation of those proteins. So in the Human Proteome Project, it's obvious that we need to characterize these in order to understand their function and to realize that um, they are there to do something. Now the problem with them is that there is no one function associated with glycosylation. You can't say because there's this sugar on this site, it's gonna have this function. So every different problem, every different question has got a different um, uh, answer to what that sugar is actually doing on that, on that protein. Now as part of the Human Proteome Project, uh, we are running uh, the Human Glycoproteomics Initiative, which is designed to increase um, our skills, our skill level set standards on how we analyze these modifications. Uh, so this is part of the uh, program of HPP is to improve the technology involved in analysing these so that more and more people can do it, so the software can be developed to actually help people do it, so it is no longer a black box that people say is too hard. Um, so that is the HPP uh, contribution we hope to make uh, in the future. Well, that's always a good question in proteomics, genomics and glycoproteomics, and clearly it's got to be made easier and or high throughput to do this. Now there's no reason why glycoproteomics can't do the same as proteomics. Mass spectrometry is one way of measuring them, but we also have the advantage of lectins uh, and specific antibodies that see these structures. So in the classic ELISAs, in the detection of uh, interactions, we can actually build on what's in the clinic, in the protein sphere, by adding a level of what's changing the sugar field. So we can increase the sensitivity and specificity by linking both the sugar and the protein to a particular diagnostic or disease. It's absolutely essential. We can't sit in a silo and only look at one omics. We have to relate the glycomics or glycoproteomics to the proteomics, to the genomics, to the metabolomics, because these are real cells. They're not just molecules floating around. With the glycoproteomics, we need to look at the genomics of the enzymes which synthesize these glycoproteins, the pathways that are involved, the cellular bodies that are involved, and the metabolic outcomes of them. So we can, none of the omics can live in isolation. If I was an ECR, I would say grab the challenge. Uh, the technologies for proteomics are pretty done, they're automated, they're happening challenges now in the glycoproteomics area and if you're a young ECR either in biology or in the technology area I think now is your opportunity you will always get a job because people want this to be done people are understanding it needs to be done and the skill level uh, needs to be there so that's an opportunity for these ECRs for the how should I say the young people in the field to take the challenge up and solve the problem.